morning. morning. Welcome to St. Matthias Church to worship with the congregations of St. Matthias Episcopal Church and First Presbyterian Church, Waukesha. We hope you will find this a welcoming place in which to worship God and celebrate community. If you want to find out more about us, there's information in a binder in the back of the pews, or you can go to our website. All baptized Christians are welcome to the Lord's table, and instructions on how to receive communion are found in the bulletin. To contribute towards our ministry here at St. Matthias, place your offering in the plate at the back of the church, or give online at our website. And to those with us online, welcome. You'll find a copy of the bulletin in the description of the video, or you can use the QR code shown during the service to find the bulletin for donate. Let us now worship God. Before we start, I'm gonna give you a warning here. So the church that I became a Christian in, in Bowling Green, Kentucky, our Episcopal church had a Southern Baptist church across the street. And on Easter mornings, uh, Father Surface, if we, if we did not respond with, Alleluia, the Lord is risen enough, loud enough, he would always tell us that he wanted us to respond loud enough that the Baptists across the street could hear it. So I'm giving you a warning. Let's give this a try. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. I'll take that. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. This is the good news we have received, in which we stand and by which we are saved. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. That Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again on the third day. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. He appeared to Peter and to the twelve and to many faithful witnesses. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. At last he came to us that we might come to believe and proclaim this good news to the world. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us worship God.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the temple, to the tomb, and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood outside, weeping. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable, O Lord, in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So on Friday, I preached a sermon titled, Why the Cross? And in it, I explained how so much of Christianity, particularly American Christianity, is caught up in a a literally medieval mode of thinking that emphasizes Jesus' suffering and God's honor more than it does God's overwhelming love for us. I propose a different way of thinking about the cross with its own ancient roots that puts the cause for Jesus' crucifixion clearly in humanity's lap. The powers of empire at Jesus' time expected him to play the games of empire, and when Jesus refused and instead threatened to destroy the entire basis of the extended game of King of the Hill humanity has always played, they killed him. God did not need Jesus to die. We did, so we could continue to persecute, abuse, and rule over each other. If you're interested to hear more about that, you can find that sermon on Facebook page or watch the live stream. But we've made it through Good Friday, and now we're here at Easter morning. The two are inexorably linked. The resurrection cannot happen without Jesus' death, and a crucifixion without the resurrection 
We believe Jesus is just another one of the hundreds of thousands of people the Romans crucified in the fear of losing power. We need them both. We need to be able to face the reality of mortality, and we also need to understand the truth that God has created us for more than that. Indeed, God has created us for more than any of this. Why the resurrection? Anything less would not reflect God's infinite love in creating us and becoming one of us in the person of Jesus. God loved us into being. In the creation myth in Genesis, God brings all into existence and declares it good. God makes humanity in God's image and calls us very good. Despite all the things that separate us from God, there is a part of us, a godly will that has never and never will consent to being separated from God. We remain God's beloved creation, no matter how far we have wandered. Despite some Christian thinking that Jesus' incarnation was some sort of last-ditch rescue operation, I think it was always God's intention. God loves us and desires us so much that God always intended to be with us, to become one of us, to walk with us, to teach us the way, and to die at our hands if our pride and hypocrisy demanded it. But you know, that's not where the story ends. God in the person of Jesus also shows us through the resurrection the beings we are intended to become. C.S. Lewis wrote in his essay, The Weight of Glory, it is a serious thing to live in a society of possible gods and goddesses, to remember that the dullest and most uninteresting person you talk to may one day be a creature which, if you saw it now, you would be strongly tempted to worship. There are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. Nations, cultures, arts, civilizations, these are mortal and their life is to ours as the life of a gnat. But it is immortals whom we joke with, work with, marry, snub, and exploit. We were created for resurrection. Jesus is, as Paul wrote, first born from among the dead, and we are all intended to follow him. On Good Friday, it appears that death has the final say. On Easter, we see the truth that death has no permanent hold on us. We need to hear this, and not just so we know what happens to us after we die. The world lives in Good Friday. The same forces that crucified Jesus, those who worship security, certitude, and power, still hold sway over humanity. We continue to crucify people on crosses of prejudice and hate, in a desperate attempt to stave off our fear of mortality, and our society is locked in an eternal cycle of trauma. I've read a number of articles this week from psychologists warning about the amount of unprocessed trauma we have from the pandemic period. In one article in The Atlantic, the authors state, four years ago, the country was brought to its knees by a world historic disaster. COVID-19 hospitalization nearly, uh, hospitalized nearly 7 million Americans and killed more than a million. It's still killing hundreds each week. It shut down schools and forced people into social isolation. Almost overnight, most of the country was thrown into a state of high anxiety, then soon enough grief and mourning. But the country has not come together to sufficiently acknowledge the tragedy it endured as clinical psychiatrists we see the effects of such emotional turmoil every day, and we know that when it's not properly processed, it can result in a general sense of unhappiness and anger. Many people don't regularly recall the details of the early pandemic, how walking down a crowded street inspired terror, how sirens wailed like clockwork in cities, or how one had to worry about inadvertently killing grandparents when visiting them. But the feelings that that experience ignited are still very much alive in our society. If you've noticed that people are angry all of the time, if you've noticed how small things seem to get blown up into huge things, if you've noticed how you yourself are a little bit more touchy or cranky these days, 
it's very possible that all of this is the effect of unprocessed trauma. We face death as a society in a way we hadn't since the influenza pandemic of 1914, and it terrified us. The pandemic created a baseline of trauma that other events, such as our parade tragedy, have only added to. And if we refuse to face the reality and admit that we are deeply affected, then the influence will continue to grow and we will become enslaved to it. The cycles of blame and violence it will create will put us in hells of our own making. Why resurrection? Because otherwise we are trapped in this Good Friday of trauma. Without the resurrection, death and hell win. Without the resurrection, our suffering has no meaning. But it does. Because Jesus is alive. He is with us in our suffering. He is with us in our trauma. He is willing to take it upon himself and to the Godhead where our wounds, once healed, become the marks of love, like the marks of crucifixion that Jesus himself still bears. God does not hate us for the things that separate us, for our sin. God understands personally how hard it is to be human. God looks upon us with pity, not with blame. No, it's not God that holds us back from abundant life, but our own stubbornness and pride. We're all here this Sunday for different reasons. Some of us feel the presence of God clearly this morning. Others don't. Some of us are here because we want to be here. Others are here because someone you love dragged you here. And you know, none of that matters. God is glad you are here, and so am I. On a Sunday morning, in a world where leisure time is precious, you are here to celebrate resurrection. You are here to celebrate the triumph of life and love over death and pain. We all bring burdens with us today, grief and worry and trauma and pain. Lay them down before the Lord of life, even if just for a minute. Give them to God, and even if they come back to you, they will be transformed. As we heard this morning, the Lord of heaven will prepare for all peoples a rich feast, a feast of choice wines, of select foods rich in flavor, of choice wines well refined. He will swallow up on this mountain the veil that is veiling all peoples, the shroud enshrouding all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe tears from every eye. Praise to the God of life, for as the hymn from the Eastern Churches state, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death. The power of sin is destroyed, and death itself is abolished. Alleluia, for the Lord is risen. Let's, let's, let's go over what that's supposed to be again. <laughs> Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Okay, let's try that. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. All right. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us unite our hearts in prayer, saying, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that as we celebrate the feast of Jesus' resurrection, we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness in Jesus' name. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For pastors, teachers, and ministers, that they be wise in leadership, humble in service, and fearless in the face of evil. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the governments of the world and its leaders, that they may practice compassion and reject the politics that use death and suffering as a means of control. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our planet Earth, that people may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the poor and the stranger, that they may receive a place of refuge, hope, and hospitality. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in distress, that they may find healing for their pain and be restored to fullness of life. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, those who share our faith in Christ, those of other faith, and those who hold to no faith that together we may dwell in harmony for the good of our world. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our enemies, that we may love them and be agents of reconciliation in the name of Jesus. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. I invite your individual prayers at this time. Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, use us for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Well, happy Easter, everybody. Thank you for coming this morning uh, to our, our second service. We've had a, a really meaningful Holy Week. I want to make sure I thank the Altar Guild, the Flower Guild, and the Music Department for all the extra work they've put in this week. Uh, it, they've done a truly amazing job of making it a very, very um, meaningful Holy Week. Um, there is an Easter egg hunt afterwards. Susan, do you have any details on that? Or just there's an Easter egg hunt afterward? Outside. The Easter egg hunt is outside, so um, afterwards the kids can head out uh, the, the East Street doors over there and I suspect just start hunting for the eggs, right? Or do we, we have some baskets to have. They have baskets so to have. Wait for the baskets. Okay, so wait for baskets. Start together. Yeah, and start at the same time. Yes. Yeah, okay. It, 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 yeah, it can, it can get pretty pretty bad if, if they ever <laughs> start at the same time. Um, all cri baptized Christians of any age and denomination are welcome to receive communion. Instructions on how to do that are pretty exhaustive and are in the bulletin. There's a prayer for people online uh, to say, uh, well, we're taking communion. Um, and I think that's all I've got this morning. Are there any birthdays, anniversary? I'm sorry? What? To, I ordered to the Flower Guild. And the, yeah, we did that first. <laughs> Keep up, Craig. Come on. <laughs> Are there any birthdays, anniversaries, or traveling blessings this morning? Travel. Cooks, what do you got? Travel. All right. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go. 
Preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Godspeed, everybody. Alleluia. Christ, once raised from the dead, is never to die again. He is no longer under the dominion of death. Alleluia.
thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless thrones of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. God, glorious in power, your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Holy God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Jesus lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, Jesus gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for Christ who died and rose for us. You sent the Holy Spirit, your own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for Jesus to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Almighty God, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption 
recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming Christ's resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting Christ's coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We bless you. God, our Creator, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with matriarchs, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Saint Matthias and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ our Savior. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours. Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, Glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of the seal, you have opened our eyes and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send us forth from this place by the power of your spirit to tell this good news to the world. The Lord has risen indeed. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. And may God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go forth in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.